life. Oh yeah. Maybe a bit of sword fighter, but yeah, like he, 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 he broke up for a bit, but <laughs> we fit for life. All right, I think we're gonna do the the, the yeah, I'm, I'm, Rosie I'm, or whatever. It's yeah, I'm, I'm about change. to give. I'm, I'll give it back. Give it back. One, slide down. Slide down. Slide to the left. Speaking of crazy, that was yeah. Down number, there. The numbers deep down there already. Football. And they're even. These are, these are the kind of interactions you ought to expect to see in this matchup. He, probably one of the bravest people to pick up a GameCube controller because this man knows no fear. He will dive out there. He knows that Numbers wants to play off stage. He knows Numbers wants to play off the ledge. You just got to catch him when you get the opportunity. I think that might have been suspect the guy. <laughs> I mean, that was also at a pretty high percentage. He was, but it was 128 after the hit with an up air from Lucina, which is, I mean, it's a definitely a solid move, but that's not necessarily the kind of move that's killing super duper early. And, oh, man, Numbers now trapped at the ledge once more. And normally he likes being there, but now right now, stock he does, yeah, he does feel trapped. <laughs> and that's why. You're not trapped. I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped you in here with me. <laughs> and that's kind of the note that this matchup goes between these two players. Like on paper, you would expect uh, Lucina to be able to zone break fairly effectively and typically speaking, keep the damage in her favor, but you cannot sleep on the ability of uh, Wii Fit to be able to break back that damage and heal a little bit off him. Yeah, we're now having John Numbers with deep breathing in effect, and anybody who's watched any John Numbers know how scary that prospect is. Okay, I think it just ran out, but that sun salutation hitting Mr. E in the face. Is this going to be a stock, possibly? Oh, Mr. E not out of the woods yet. Yeah, right now, E rushing in, just taking a bunch of damage. He's going to end up getting grabbed in the process. Now he's on the hunt, but he's not going to find the market forward air. Numbers able to get out of this E pressure. And he's putting up his own pressure from the galaxy away. Yeah, man, the snipes, the, the header ball. Finally coming to. These are both players that, like, in spite of having radically different play styles and characters to execute said styles, I feel like at the heart of their play are very similar in that they're both very tenacious. Both of them just want to swing on you. They want to execute their game plan and never be shaken away from it. It's, they both are tenacious, and at the same time, they're kind of the antithesis of each other. You know, John Numbers putting himself willingly on stage, trying to get those reversals, whereas Mr. E is going to put himself out there regardless. Because, you know, even though he died on, like, whatever that was, 50 to the, uh, the side B, that is where he's getting a lot of his kills, just managing to hit with those strong Lucina hitboxes. Like, the truly two sides of the same coin when it comes to how they approach the game. Honestly, with the consistent return uh, returns to the ledge and the reversals and damage, it's still anyone's game. But that sun salutation and the dash attack pushing things in numbers' favor. Oh, oh. He peeled back a little bit. He gave you a little bit of break, uh, breathing room. You see that? Uh, he tried to footstool him. He tried to footstool him, but numbers had already inputted something, so instead he got the phantom footstool. And oh, I love the idea behind it, but Mr. E, once more, he's trapped at the ledge. For the most part, I'd say John Numbers hasn't really been getting stocks off of ledge. In fact, Mr. E is getting off the ledge pretty for free. You know, you have to respect everything that Lucina can do out there. Oh, and here's, here's where the clenching begins. <laughs> like, what's important about the ledge play for Numbers is the ability to get deep breathing. And the ability to try and reset his resources, but it is E who's able to find the stocks easier because his character is just better suited for being able to rush out and finish the job. I also, I love that, that Mr. E did not show that car. He held it, like, cupped up in his sleeve for the entirety of that game, and when he needed it most, goes in for the ledge jump back there, kills numbers, I think he's at a... It was like around 100, 110 percent. Yeah, something like with that. With deep breathing in effect, but no, that's more than enough. All right, we got the run of that right onto Pokemon Stadium 2. And stage-wise, I think this is about as good of a situation as Numbers is going to get with the Encore stage list. And I feel like what? he played it out uh, well. Was that a misinput? Was that a next level mind game? <laughs> hey, listen, he got to psych himself up too, man. 
I'm sure by numbers and zone standards, the ledge play not really up to snuff in that game one because you even pointed out how consistently he is turning these reversals, whether it's netting the stocks off stage or even getting in his few licks. If it was up to numbers, well, ledge would be impenetrable defenses that he could rely on to throw projectiles and set up his deep breathing and sun salutation so he can find those reversals on stage because that's where the stocks are really coming in for numbers. Oh, we try to get greedy getting the two heads of that. That parry was so good. But with deep breathing, this uh, John Numbers has started to actually make this comeback here. 102% on E and he is trapped off the ledge. We haven't really seen an F tilt or anything like that. That was kooky. Yeah, he was just going to throw right into the header ball for some added damage. I like that, though. He's at 151. Yeah, man. Just All those little instances of being able to rack up little extra percentages, that adds up really quickly when you consider the deep breathing buff and how often Numbers is swinging. Now, this is the sort of thing where this percent range is really important for Numbers because Sun Salutation will guarantee kill from anywhere. And that's when he's going to be throwing it out. And right on back to the ledge, gets his resources all set up. And the forward tilt setting out to the opposite side, not the best of situations for E. <gasps> the spacing on that. Oh, Numbers. The Numbers is looking so much better than in this game here. Yeah, I think game one, Mr. E really gave John Numbers the wake-up call, and this is looking a bit more to form for how Numbers plays at the ledge. But you still gotta be careful. That's still Lucina in the hands of E. You kinda see that? Oh! I was gonna say, where we can see that carefulness as John slows it down just a little bit at the ledge. But Mr. E, oh! That's the first F2 we've seen, and the header to finish the job? Yo, he's two for two on the snipes inside me now. Yeah, I'm loving the micro spacing from John. Like, being able to space around a huge hitbox like Lucina's sword is really impressive. And to do it consistently, especially with a character like Wii Fit, who's not exactly known for disjoints. I mean, she's basically just a person. I think the fact that a good number of her, in, uh, her close in tools that Numbers takes advantage of when he is on stage either have really unusual hitboxes or a healthy dose of intangibility on her arms. Oh, good job. Throwing out like preemptive down tilts. <laughs> John, what? He put up his hands. Uh, I'm actually saw that in the player cam. But Oh, I think this is a wrap here. Oh, as I say that, he actually makes it back to stage, reverses it, and now he still has a path to victory here. Yeah, I can't yes. call it too soon. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's now at 124%. Put off stage. Numbers are looking to end it, especially with deep breathing. Just waits yeah. for the roll. That's that backward set of forward tilt that's bringing us right into a game three. That looked like a much more confident numbers. Oh, yeah. Confident not only at the ledge, but also on stage, coming down from... It, it, was just, it felt like a different breed. And as we move on to game three here, uh, I'm wondering, you know, whether Mr. E will make the adaptations, try and shut down this, you know, the momentum that numbers has here. You know, like, both these players are amazing at adaptation. You know, they have their game plans, but they also know exactly how to change them up in order to deal with their opponent. And now it's kind of an arms race, and the ball is in Mr. East Court. He's able to choose the counter pick. It's going to be small battlefield from the looks of it. And what are your thoughts on that stage? For small battlefield? Oh, they clicked it to FD. So FD is the pick. I think this is a very typical E stage. Oh, like, it's actually FD? Yeah, I saw them select into I heard Small Battlefield too. I heard them talking about it. Huh. Yeah, no, we definitely got bait and switched on that one. But the pick into FD, I think, makes a lot of sense for E because you already know you're playing numbers at the ledge. Like, it's it's almost like it's a certain factor of how to E plays Wii Fit. Not every Wii Fit is like this, but numbers is definitively like this. So it's the sort of thing where a lot of the times when I see somebody pick FD, I think it's because they want to be better at or more effective at ledge trapping and juggling. But against numbers specifically, ledge trapping is always a kind of a it's, it's a nebulous thing to begin with. So when I see this FD pick, I think that Mr. E is going to be looking more for those juggle opportunities and to get as much mileage off of that as he can. 
I think also the fact that the stage itself doesn't have a lot of variety by virtue of no platforms. There's not a lot of ways for Numbers to really mix up how he chooses to play the on-stage game. Because in spite of Numbers, like, infiming at the ledge, where he's really been catching out here is in these interactions at center stage or approaching to the ledge, where Numbers goes on the hunt while he has his deep breathing buff and finds those tilts to be able to really put in a dent. Ooh, Numbers not ready for that in-your-face aggression from E. And that opening that he managed to get himself, he could take it all the way here. Looking for some way, and just a little bit too patient. Numbers goes for a neutral getup, and that allows him for some deep breathing. And deep breathing yep. down tilt is actually enough to close it out from across the stage. But we're going to go stock for stock as back air find its mark for Mr. E. And just like that, we're back to square one. Salty Foot, I feel like this stage is inviting a lot more of a scuffle from both of these players. And while E looks a lot more comfortable in this situation, he's got to watch out for his best options from numbers. Look at the damage that racks up so quickly. And that wasn't even, the first hit of it was deep breathing, but deep breathing ran out in the middle of that combo. And numbers was able to adjust it in order to still get all of this damage. And you, you know, like, hey man, you said before how, oh, they're kind of, you know, more in the thick of it. We're seeing a lot more, like, trades happening. And those trades, I'd say they're working out for numbers. Reefit's damage output is still really good. Yeah, no, this kind of just combos are not to be slept on by any means, dude. Like, numbers will nickel and dine you at the ledge, and that's okay. But when he starts rushing in on you with nares, the up airs, the forward tilts, the dash attacks, that damage racks up very quickly, especially when you consider the header ball intercepting in a lot of situations. Like, keeping that damage up as Lucina is not an easy so sneaky using the ball as a bait right there. You know, he would been, you know, up until that point, a lot of it was good, good pickup with that down tilt. But um, a lot of it before, you know, he was throwing it out and then maybe jabbing it, you know, sending this quick thing his way. But instead, he runs right past it. And it's one of those things where John Numbers has also little secrets, little tricks that he has yet to show here. Even though we're in game three, last stock situation. Like, my man is full of tricks. He's almost built his Smash career on being full of tricks, but that's just one clean combo. Hit after hit after hit. Number six, I mean, there's a 2-1 victory over Mr. Three. I call that tricky at the very least. Numbers managing to reverse that situation once again.